Hi, this is Dave Meshka from Notman Marks, and this video is going to give you guidance and instructions on accessing and creating exams on the QBank to help you prepare for your series exams. To begin with, let's direct our browsers to www.notman.com slash kfqbank. And when you log into that site, you're going to be prompted to put in your username and your password. You would have gotten your username emailed to you from us when you enrolled in the program. But if you can't find that username, or it's the first time that you're logging in, you're going to have to set up your own password. And so to do so, you're just going to click down here at the Forgot Username or Forgot Password link. And when you click that link, you'll be prompted to put in your email address and you want to send us the, put in the email address that you were enrolled with so it could be your personal, it could be your work email and the system will then kick back to you an email with a link that's going to allow you to set your password. After you set your password you'll come back to this same web page and you're going to put in the username, put in your password and log in. So I'll put in my username here it's going to be uh, MSH capital D 338-1565 and I'm going to enter my password and then I'm going to click login and this is going to put me into the system what I'm going to see here is I'm going to be welcomed hello David Meshkov that's great hi and then you're going to be able to access your courses and that's going to be at this top bar here when you click access your courses you're going to see all the enrollments all the exams that you can prepare for now I obviously have a lot of exams that I teach and that I'll have access to but you're going to have the test that you're preparing for so you might see a couple in there if you have a couple exams going you might just see one and that's fine too so let's set up an exam on our series 7 QBank so I'm going to click series 7 there and it's going to take me to this uh, QBank setup where I have three options option one create a qu custom quiz, this orange button. And this is going to be the most important thing. This is where we're going to spend the bulk of our time, custom quiz. I do not want students to use the simulate exam button, this red button here. If you use simulate exams, what will happen is the system is going to generate you a test, but it's going to include repeat questions. And we want to avoid repeat questions. We want all your questions to be brand new questions. So please avoid that red simulate exam and instead back to the custom quiz. That's where we're going to spend our time. The blue button over here, access offline, that's going to be the ability to download uh, questions should you not have the ability to access the internet when you want to be studying. So again, as a wrap up here, we're going to use the custom quiz on this particular page. We can also see I had a prior exam that I did tonight. Uh, all your previous tests will be there. If you were to, for example, stop mid-exam, you could come back to a in-progress exam here. Uh, assuming that you need to create a new exam, we're going to go to Custom Quiz, the orange button. And we're going to get to name our quiz. You don't have to change the name of them. It indicates the date. But if you were to be, for example, taking a test on a particular topics, just munis, just options, uh, suitability, you could name it so when you come back, you would be able to identify what you took you then are going to select which topics you want to be tested on and we've got all topics and so that's always a good way to test practice on everything or you could select just a couple chapters or even just one chapter you want to really zoom in on munis you struggle with options taking 20 or 30 questions on just one topic is a great choice go ahead and create an exam on just that but what I'm going to do is create an exam on all the topics and you can see I scroll down if I want to zoom in even deeper I could I want to look at options and I want to see specifically within that options category you can do that you can make these exams very specific should you wish to do so I've decided it's going to be all topics now I need you to think what questions do I want the system to include as I mentioned we want all your questions to be new questions so you need to leave this on the unused box only new questions should be drawn in by the system for your exam in terms of the number of questions, there's not a right or a wrong here. If you don't have that much time, do 20 questions. Or, change your mind, you have a little more time, do 40 or 60. Ultimately, what you want to be thinking about is how much time can you commit to effective, high-value study. 
Now towards the end of your study process, you do want to ramp it up to do sections or quizzes for 130 questions. And the reason for that is I want you to get the pacing, the endurance, the familiarity with sitting and doing that many questions in one sitting. But that's more towards the end of your course of study when you're getting fewer questions wrong, you're having to do less review as you go because you're really practicing on some of these other features of the exam as opposed to learning. So number of questions, not a right or wrong, depends on how much time you have, depends where you are in your study process. Finally, quiz features, and this is important, need you to check both of these boxes. Score as you go and show answer explanations. This one's really important, show answer explanations. It's got to be checked. Uh, this is going to tell the system to give you the feedback as you're actually testing give you the rationale and give you the guidance where in the book is that content so you can go learn it right then and there. And from there you're going to launch the quiz. And as soon as that happens you're off and running. You can see here I'm at question 1 of 130. Question asks about open-end investment company shares. A prospectus must be delivered. Uh, and then you're going to pick the answer choice that's best for you. Just be aware as soon as you click the button it's going to be selected. And so I'm going to pick answer choice A here, and that's the correct answer. Notice I get the rationale, and I get the reference. So if you didn't understand this, or you didn't know the rules relating to prospectuses and mutual funds, now's the time to take a pause on the exam. Go to section 10.4.1 in your textbook and learn about it. Now's the time, not later on, not at the end of the test, but right then and there so that you can continue to gain knowledge. And then you click Next, and you're off to the next question. This is about an options account. You're the registered rep. They want to get guidance on it. Notice, if you want to make sure that uh, you wanted to pick B, turns out C is the right answer. And so you get the explanation down below. You want to read that. And then you're going to look to the reference 4631. If you're not familiar with what's going on with options accounts, now's the time to take a pause go to that reference and learn more about it. Ultimately, you'll finish the exam. It's going to give you a breakdown, but you now see how to set up your tests, how to use the QBank effectively, and understand what features are going to make your studying as efficient as possible. Thank you for your time. Good luck on your exams, and we hope to see you soon.